Hi, I'm Bob Aichino, and today I want to talk to you guys about dark pools. I know dark pools sounds really secretive and sinister and scary, like something out of Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones, but it's really not. Secretive, yes, a little bit secretive, but not scary. Dark pools started in the late 1980s, and all they really are are privately organized financial exchanges or hubs which is different from a publicly financially regulated exchange like the NYSE or the NASDAQ. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons. On the pro side of the ledger for dark pools, they definitely favor investors executing large block trades. You would think this would make sense in any number of ways. First of all, the privacy part of it, which honestly is another pro in and of itself. But if you're executing large block trades, you don't necessarily want to throw that out into the market, regardless of whether you're a large institution or whether you're an individual executing large trade. Now again, this can be looked at as an advantage for both the entity trying to execute the large order and the overall market that will be less affected by a larger order that flows through a dark pool. Block trades can be broken up, easily executed in smaller increments. It also tends to decrease the total time to fill an entire large block of trades. Now, I mentioned privacy. That's also a con by itself. Dark pools allow for more privacy than trading on a normal public exchange. That must follow normal public reporting rules. This could enable easier execution of extremely large block trades, as I mentioned, which could substantially move the stock price up or down. A large trade can be quietly pieced together, small batches, allowing for the potential to build a large position without tipping off the rest of the market. Now, the reverse is also true. A large liquidation event can take place quietly as well, and that affects the people that aren't involved in that large liquidation event. Now also, trades can be executed at the theoretical bid-ask midpoint, which would save the full spread. Whether you're trading for free or whether you're paying for a substantially more efficient execution through maybe an agency broker of your choice, the bid-ask is the cost. It's one of the costs in trading. We'll talk more about that in another video, but if you can get the actual bid ask, if you know what that bid ask is, and you're going through a dark pool or an institution is going through a dark pool, they can theoretically get in the middle of that because a dark pool can enable that to happen. This is especially a pro during the time when you're aware of that true bid ask, as I said. The dark pool bid ask can be representative of that true bid ask. If you aren't aware of it, well, that probably falls in to the con section. It also potentially lowers transaction costs due to no exchange fees. That's pretty self-explanatory. You're trading at a privately held financial exchange or financial hub. There are no exchange fees that go along with it, whether you're a maker or a taker, especially for high frequency traders. So that's something else we're gonna talk about in another video. Now, there's lack of transparency with dark pools. That goes to both the advantages and the disadvantages. In certain situations, traders may want to avoid exchange reporting rules. Maybe they don't want to tip off the other market participants to the position that they're building or the position that they're liquidating. That actually might be a bigger factor in the decision to direct an order to a dark pool. Now, there's some negatives about it. I mentioned that the name itself seems sinister, but it really isn't. However, that lack of transparency that I mentioned as a positive could also be a negative. There's no guarantee that the trade that was executed in the dark pool was executed at the best price. Dark pool orders do not show up alongside the lit bid ask orders and participants have no real idea because of that how much is actually out there. Really fictional made up example, if a mutual fund owns 10% of a particular stock and sells in it a dark pool, you'll never see those orders until they're reported as executed trades. And because of this, you may actually buy that same stock after a large liquidation, liquidation event. And when that liquidation event gets reported, that could theoretically push the price in the opposite direction that you just got in. That's completely fictional, obviously, but not knowing what's going on because it's not represented in those lit bid asks could be a negative depending on the situation. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that that same lack of transparency that fell under both the pros and the cons of dark pool makes it possible that there could be conflicts of interest 
even borderline unethical practices that take place within a dark pool that would be very, very hard to detect. Proprietary traders within a dark pool can potentially trade against clients or even sell special access to HFT firms for those orders. And that kind of takes away some of the benefits of best execution. The traders and the HFT are not necessarily concerned if that's a case that happens with the execution that you get. Now, this is where smart order routing could potentially be a huge benefit. It's part of the reason I'm such a huge fan of it. Now, I'm of course not implying these things happen daily, weekly, or at all. I'm just saying it goes back to transparency, something that dark pools have very little of. Thanks for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and also subscribe to the YouTube channel. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video very soon.